Welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. Before we get started, I wanted to introduce you to another of Nancy's books, The Fruit of Her Hands. Where would the church be today if the men in it were respected as they ought to be by their wives? Nancy Wilson exhorts wives to stop focusing on their husband's problems and shortcomings and to look at their own responsibilities and learn the contentment which the Bible continually exhorts us to. This book is part of the Canon Press series of books on the family, which has helped many people trying to deal with the everyday messes that come with sinners living under the same roof. This book on marriage for women reminds us to keep our eyes fixed on what the Bible defines as our duties and not on the modern lies which flatter us. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Proverbs 31, 31. Get Nancy Wilson's The Fruit of Her Hands at canonpress.com. Welcome to the Feminine Podcast. This is Nancy Wilson. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about what it means to have a refuge. Deuteronomy 33:27 says this, The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. This is a, you know, it's just, there are so many verses, right, that we could just ponder, we could, I could, you know, people could make podcasts to the end of the world <laughs> over so, they're all so rich, there's so many rich, rich Verses. So I don't know why this one jumped out at me, but it did. But it made me start thinking about, well, what is a refuge? A refuge is a place we run to when we're in trouble. And thus we have the word refugees. They're running from a dangerous place to what they hope will be a safe place. And so since all of us encounter troubles of all kinds, we definitely need a refuge. And in this verse, we see the eternal God is our refuge. And so I thought what I would talk about with you today is what does this mean exactly? And how do we get there? So God is our safe place. He is our refuge. And so no matter what the troubles are, we can take refuge in him. And not only that, but as this verse continues, it says, underneath us are his everlasting arms. Arms that will never grow weary. I'm strong arms that are not going to give way. So what a tremendous consolation this is for the believer. It's like we have this promise that God is our refuge. And of course, there are so many similar passages in Scripture. Uh, One other similar one is uh, Psalm 46.1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I remember that was one of the early Christian scripture songs that I learned. And I can never, uh, I would sing it to you. (laughs) Ha ha, that would be a treat, no doubt. At any rate, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. When we are in trouble, you know, we need a very present help, don't we? Not a help that might not get there in time. But God's help is a present help. In fact, it is very present. I want you to just contemplate that for a moment. What a huge promise that is, that we can always know. And what a relief. Our God, the eternal God who ever lives, who never changes, who always keeps his word, has promised to be our refuge, our strength, and our very present help. So the first thing we have to do, women, is believe this. Okay, this is not just a nice verse that we could cross stitch. It's a true verse, like all the rest of them. And it's our duty to believe it. We must believe this and not just file it away as a nice, you know, heartwarming verse, but we need to to actually believe it. When danger comes, if you think about this for a minute, when danger comes, it is very present, isn't it? We may see it coming on the horizon like a storm coming and have a little bit of warning, or it may just come upon us suddenly with no warning at all. 
Either way, in either case, we need a very present help. So we may instinctively call 911 if the house is on fire, and so we should. One time, years ago, we had a house fire, a surprise on a Sunday afternoon, and I went to call 911 while Doug and Nate went outside with the hose. I think Nate was maybe in, uh, I don't know, he was in elementary school. But at any rate, they went out with the hose, and the hose was, <laughs> it was worthless, they told me later. It was worthless. At any rate, I tried to call 911, and it was like a dream I was having where the phone would not work. And I think perhaps because it was up in the wiring of our house um, that maybe that we had lost the phone line. I don't remember, but it just all seemed in slow-mo to me. So I had to go to the neighbors, and they called 911 for me. But that's great. That's a good idea. But the fire truck is not present. You know, you can call them, and they will come as quickly as they can, but it's still going to take a few minutes. God is a very present help. You know, the firemen may be too late completely. And in this crazy time that we're living in right now, I mean, I heard recently, it was a couple of weeks ago now, and by the time you hear this podcast, it may be even older news, but during some of the rioting, uh, one of the city aldermen in Chicago was calling 911 all day long and never got an answer. You know, and some American cities are thinking of or have already defunded their police departments. So, We can't put our trust in man. We have to be assured that God is our ever-present help. Man is definitely not a very present help. And it seems that God is showing us how foolish it is to put our trust in man when we are in danger or when we have troubles. So once we believe this and we know it is true and we, we really claim this promise. We know this is true. God is our very present help. How do we experience it? Well, I mean, when we know God is our present help, the house is still on fire and we do still need firemen. I'm not suggesting that we just gather and pray and not call the fire department. It's, it's of course, the wise thing to do is to get help. So how do we, ex- and what I mean by help is we need the big hoses <laughs> that really pump the water. But how do we experience this very present help that God gives us, this promise of help and promise of a refuge? Psalm 91, 1 says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And in verse 4, it says, and he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. Okay. Now, this promise is for the one who dwells in the secret place. And let's just say that the secret place is this refuge we're talking about. It's a place we live in. We are in Christ. We are in him. We are his own special people. And we dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. So we believe this by faith. It is true whether we feel like it or not. It's true because God has said it. But it would be even better if we experienced the peace and comfort of being there, right? I mean, we want to know how to actually get there. And so I just want to share a couple of things with you about how I think you can experience it. Uh, If we are in Christ, we are already there. We are in the refuge. We are under his wing. Um, But sometimes we don't feel like it. We feel worried or anxious. Um, upset, terrified, whatever. And so what I do when I have a trouble or a worry um, is I go to what I call the sweet spot. And that's just under God's wing. And, and so when my, for example, when my son had brain surgery a few years ago, I found that when I deliberately submitted myself to God and got under his feet, I knew I was safe. I had comfort. I had peace. No matter what the outcome, I would remind myself, you know, you are God. You are good. You do all things well. And I would just put my trust in him. And I would have peace and comfort. And just a feeling that I was safe. I knew I was safe in Christ. And, and I was praying, obviously, 
for Nate to be safe all the way through his surgery and out. Um, but there's no better place to run to in trials. And during that long brain surgery, when I felt worry rising again in my heart because it went longer than it was supposed to and we just didn't get word and we didn't get word, I just kept submitting myself to God and thanking him and staying in that sweet spot and, of course, praying for my son. Um, and so this is what you have to do, whatever your trouble is, is get under God's feet, get under his wing and trust him. Um, a year or so later, uh, my husband had a biopsy done for a small tumor, and we had every expectation it was going to be benign because that the doctor was really confident that it would not be malignant. And so um, it's funny. I mean, we weren't worried about it. We were praying about it, but we were not worked up about it. And my husband said, hey, meet me for dinner, which I did. I met him downtown for dinner. And I came in being all chatty about something, and he said, so, I heard from my doctor, and the tumor is cancerous. Well, I was, <laughs> I was not expecting that, you can imagine. And I remember, I felt a wave, like, quickly rising up from my feet, <laughs> and I knew that if it made it all the way up to the top, I was going to cry. You know, it was just this feeling it just started coming and I thought I have to act fast and so I was quickly silently saying thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord and I tell you it made it maybe up to my chin and stopped <laughs> it's like whew um that was a close call not that it's a sin to cry but it wasn't going to be helpful at that moment and we were in a restaurant so I mean you know and I just feel like it's it's just that principle of not letting anxiety, fear just overwhelm me, but quickly get under God's feet. Because that's where we are, but we just submit ourselves once again and trusting in a trusting position, and he gives us strength. So I was able to then take a deep breath and say, so, now what? You know, or <laughs> I don't remember the rest of the conversation. But I am just saying I've had opportunities to practice this, and I've had opportunities since. I'm just giving you a couple of illustrations so you know what I'm talking about, that it could be some other kind of trouble but, and where you have maybe more time to get under his feet, but that you consciously go to him, say, Lord, you're my refuge. I am here. I'm trusting you. I need strength right now. And I, I want to experience that you are a very present help in trouble. And he comes with peace and comfort. He is our God. And so if we turn to him in times like this, I think then we'll find ourselves capable of walking through it with courage and faith because he provides. But we have to seek him and trust him. So when you have a fresh trial, ladies, and you know, it wouldn't hurt to say, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm ready now. I've got my sleeves rolled up. So when the next thing comes, and it may be you've, it's already come this morning, and you're just in the midst of one right this very moment, but rather than all the different alternatives that will present themselves to you, like self-pity or fear or worry or anxiety or turning quickly to all kinds of people for help rather than to God, Go to him first. Go to your refuge. As I said earlier, I'm not saying don't call the doctor. I'm not saying don't call the ambulance. Of course not. That's wisdom. But go to your strength. Um, I remember being on the hospital, on the way to the hospital one time for um, our first grandson, our first grandchild. Uh, and he was just an infant. And I remember being on the way to the hospital. He was having some heart issues. And of saying, I know God does all things well. And it just, again, gave me such peace and comfort and strength as we went in the door to when we didn't know what would be there. And he was a very present help, and he continues to be. And no matter what the situation, whether it's in your family or in our culture or in the neighborhood or 
What's happening? He is still true to his word. He is a very present help. It, even if you don't feel his presence in a physical way, he's true to his word. And the more you trust him, the stronger your faith will go and the more opportunities you will have to practice this. And you'll get better at it. And your first impulse will be to go to your very present help, go to your refuge and know that you are safe there in Christ. What can man do to you? And that is a tremendous help in your Christian life. The Christian faith is a very practical faith, and God puts these verses in his word so that we will learn to turn to him automatically as our refuge, as our source of comfort and help and strength and wisdom. And so don't waste your opportunities to turn to him. Thank you all for tuning in. Blessings to you on this week. I pray that you'll be able to apply this. 